Praise God. The Lord is good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Looks like we're in for another hot one. Praise God. I'd like to read a scripture uh, before we pray. I know there's quite a few people that uh, this morning have requested prayer. Many are going through much. Um, but in the word of God, in Psalms 34. We'll start in verse 1. The word of God says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked at him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. A poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Praise God. We can trust in the Lord in all things. We serve a merciful and a loving God. Um, again, I, I mentioned this morning we have a, a few people to pray for, so I'm going to ask you to stand. And we're going to... We're going to open with prayer. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time you've given us, Father, to gather in your name. Father, we thank you because we trust in you in all things. Your grace and your mercy goes before us. And Lord, we just lift up those who are afflicted, Lord, right now. Father, I, I lift up my brother Ted to you, Lord, as he even goes through this surgery tomorrow, Lord, that you would cover him, that you would strengthen him and and bring him through father just even rejoicing lord you would continue to cover father his wife as she goes through this chemotherapy lord and you touch cynthia in a special way father we lift up miguel to you right now lord that you would bless our brother in a special way you would continue to help him with the, the effects that he's going through lord but father continue to raise him up and and be glorified through all this lord we trust in you we know you are a god who is able father we lift up even Father, uh, this man, Mike, Bucky's husband, Lord, as he goes through this, this physical trial, Lord, you know what he goes through. You know the situation. You know all things. Bless this family in a special way. Continue to cause them to draw close to you and to look up and to seek your face. We trust in you in all things. And this morning we gather with a godly excitement for all you have for us. Bless, Father, all those who are here and those who are still coming. And continue to bless those who are at home who are unable to be with us, Lord. We thank you. We give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Let's worship God, God's people. Praise Praise your voice. Shout for joy all the church. We sing a new song now. We sing. A new song and to ring through the gate and to ring here we pray. Come before come bring your song. We are. 
so in our midst, in our presence, we felt you. And then it's like, whoa, oh, do that again next time. <laughs> the time that he, I'm sorry, if he did that all the time, if he manifested himself in that way, then it would become common. It would become routine. And it wouldn't be the same as when he does show and manifest himself in that way. Amen, God's people? We don't want to get used to that. We never want to get used to what God does. Because God is fresh, he's new, he's excited every time we gather. And Lord knows. So, Brother Juan?
we know. And the Lord in his mercy, you know, he starts doing, you know, his movement, movement. And, you know, for us. Yeah. You know, and thank God for that. You know, for that's why, you know, we have to be obedient yeah. when uh, when you feel something in your heart, when you have somebody in your in your, in your mind, you have to pray for them right there. Yeah. Don't yeah. wait. Oh I'm gonna wait. No, pray for them because we might be gonna ask. But you say you are the one to pray to them because in prayer the work the word right there, the prayer of the saints, you know, people have to wait. You know, God God feels. And that's why this morning I was so happy and so happy, you know, to see the you know that see all of you right here. Praising God and you know and that's why we are here. Before I go let me read the scripture and that is it's in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Amen, brother? Yeah. It says, uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, yeah. let your request be made known to God, yeah. and he and the peace of God which surpass all understanding be, will guard you heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's yeah. the word of God talks about right there. Amen. And I know it's hard sometimes. You know, there's a kind of situation. Yeah. But the word of God says, you know, Amen. that's why it says, be, you know, everything by prayer. So they say that prayer makes the answer the door. Yeah. Amen. 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 I just want to share Amen. that with you. And thank, thank you for your Amen. prayer, like you say. Thank you, and uh, God bless you. this morning on the river of life.
where the river of life originates, where it comes from, where it begins. We know that that river does not come from the king's palace or the government. That river doesn't come from the marketplace or the business uh, financial portion. It doesn't come from the athletic arena. It comes from the throne. It comes from the presence of God. And in Ezekiel chapter 12, or excuse me, chapter 47, we'll start in verse 1. The word of God says, Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple. And there was water flowing from underneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. And the front of the temple faced east. And the water was flowing from underneath the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around on the outside of the outer gateway that faces east and there was water running out of the right side verse 3 and when the man went out of the east with a line in his hand he measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me through the waters and the waters came up to my ankles again he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters and came up to my knees and again he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters and he came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000. And it was a river that I could not cross. For the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. And a river that could not be crossed. And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time to gather in your name. Father, we thank you for this beautiful time of worship, and we thank you for this testimony, and even, Father, for the opportunity to be together in the house of God. And we ask by your Holy Spirit that you would continue to move through this time of the word. That, Father, help your word, Father, just move in our hearts, just, Father, resonate within us, and just, and, and Father, just cause us to seek your face even more. We desire a deeper understanding of you, Father. Move by your Holy Spirit in a mighty way. Continue to bless those who are at home, those who are, are listening online. Cover them and keep them. And Father, just continue to go before us even this day. We thank you. Again, we put this in you in your hands. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, what I mentioned before is what we were looking for is the source. The source of the water. And again, where did the where did the water originate? Uh, personally, I am a plumber by trade. I may say some things now that only Victor's going to be able to, our brother Victor's going to be able to follow me as a solid plumber. But if I get a phone call from a school site and they say there is a water leak. My first duty is to find the source of said leak. So before I can make a repair, I have to find out where the leak is coming from. Um, there's a difference. You might get to a school and they will say, there's water running out constantly from underneath this sink. You say, okay, the water is probably, the source is probably this sink here. Then they say, see the floor drains? Every time I flush the toilet, water comes out of them. Well, it's not really water. <laughs> that is a clogged sewer line. Because it only happens when you flush. That's way too much plumbing information for you this morning, and I apologize for that. But now when you go home and something happens, it comes up in your tub, you go, oh, hey, now I know what's going on. <laughs> so, First and foremost, you have to identify because there are two different ends of the spectrum. One is the reclaimed end that you don't want any part of, and then one is clean potable water. So find
finding the source is the important part before you can do anything else. You have to see where it's coming from. Water in general, especially moving water, is very powerful. Uh, during the rainy seasons, we always seem to, uh, we haven't seen too many rainy seasons lately, but we always seem to find somebody getting washed down the, the riverbed or something along those lines. But the fact is that it only takes about six inches of moving water to be able to knock down an adult. Uh, they say that 12 inches can carry most cars down the road. So water is considered one of the most powerful things. Because if you have water that's spraying, it can wear a hole in a rock. Even if it's not spraying real hard, it's just consistent. If it's constantly doing it, it will wear, it will wear a hole. Um, Friday in USA Today, they published a news story with the title, Experts Warn California of a Disaster Larger Than Any in World History, and it is not an earthquake. That was the, 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 the title of the story. Um, I, I didn't see it on any of the news channels. I, I didn't see it as a breaking news lead story because California is going to be the greatest disaster that's ever happened in the history of the world. I, I, I saw some lady in the airport fighting with a, a guy that works for the airlines. That was like a big news story. But I didn't see anything about the destruction of California. You would think that would kind of make the, the headline, but it didn't seem to do it. But underneath that title in USA Today, it said, it's mega flood. It says this mega flood could submerge. It sounds like a movie, huh? <laughs> Sharknado or something. <laughs> it says this flood could submerge cities, displace millions of people, and the flood would be a trillion dollar disaster. And they have called this the other big one. Because I guess the big one is supposed to be the earthquake. And we've heard that about San Andreas Fault. That's going to be the big one. And we have all these experts that are saying this is going to happen. So I guess that means we can water our lawn. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the drought. There's going to be a big flood coming and, and everything's going to be underwater. You can get beachfront property in Arizona. It's going to be great. <laughs> That's what the experts say. And it's funny how so many of these experts uh, put out so many of these uh, uh, studies, I guess you could call it, and so much of it has to do with funding. Now we need to put more funding to figure out when the flood is going to come. And that's <laughs> it's a little unusual. But the fact that a flood is very powerful is the main portion that I wanted to to make known. We just read in, uh, in Ezekiel 47 that there was a flood that came from the temple. Uh, many portions of the word of God have spiritual meaning and many portions have literal meaning. And there is also many portions that are both. So we can't dismiss uh, something as one or the other when it, it may be both. I mean, look at uh, Noah's Ark. We recently talked about that. And it says that he was told to line the inside of the ark with pitch. And what do we know pitch to be representative of? The Holy Spirit. Uh, in the same likeness, the Word of God talks about leprosy. And in leprosy, we see another picture of sin. See, these are different spiritual representations of physical things that are there as well. That's kind of the case in this circumstance with this flood. Um, this flood is a prophetic word that will 
will happen in the future. Uh, some of the references are, and we're not going to go through, through those, uh, uh, Revelations chapter 7, verse 17, uh, Revelations chapter 22, verse 1, it mentions the flood, it mentions coming from where it's coming from, the throne, uh, these different things that are going on. It even talks about how the water will be flooded down into the Dead Sea, and that the Dead Sea will be revived. And when we were in Israel, I remember the guy talking about saying people were trying to buy property uh, at the shore of the Dead Sea because once the, the Dead Sea is back alive and there's fishing and everything out, then it's going to be a, mm. a hot spot, I guess. <laughs> but that's just those who believe the Word of God to be true. So in this portion, we're going to be looking more at the the prophetic word of God. Um, in John chapter 7, and you can, you can keep your finger in Ezekiel, we're going to be bouncing back and forth in that. In John chapter 7, verse 37. We'll start in John 7 37. The word of God says, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit has not yet was not yet given because Jesus had not been glorified. Obviously, prior to his ascension, he says, when I leave, the Holy Spirit will come. But it's saying that through the Holy Spirit, through us, these living waters will come forth. In Colossians, excuse me, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. says in verse 3. You know what, let's just start in verse 1 just to give it more context. It says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers were under the cloud. All passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. That for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Amen. Praise God. This was the living water, this was the source. Jesus is the source. So we see this as, as the spiritual meaning behind this flood. Jesus being the rock. So let's go back to Ezekiel now. And we'll start in verse 3. So we've already clarified where the water is flowing from. It is flowing from the temple. Verse 3, it says, And when the man, and this is a guide for Ezekiel. It doesn't, it, it doesn't give a name for this. It's the unnamed guide who it's speaking of. It says, and when the man went out of the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits. A cubit is basically 18 inches. So it says he measured 1,000 cubits. So it's roughly 18 inches. They're talking about, depending on who, whose math you trust, 
a quarter mile to a third of a mile in distance. So he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters and the waters came up to my ankles. So this water, this living water, there's some key things in the midst of this. One of the keys is Ezekiel, Ezekiel was brought through the water. He didn't stand on the shore and look at the water. He was taken into the water. Amen. How deep was Ezekiel into the water? Amen. To his ankles. But that was as deep as the water was. Amen. So he was in as far as he could be. He was committed completely. He was in the water to his ankles. And he was placed in this position. Okay. We know Israel to be a desert. Uh, we know that God has blessed them abundantly because you don't have a desert that is number three in produce uh, exporting. They export. They're number three in the world in exporting produce. The desert. <laughs> That's how good God is. But what is the most valuable thing in the desert? Water. Water. A camel is probably close, but <laughs> if you get a ride. But water. Water is, is, is what will bring life. So this water that he's standing in is at his ankles. And then it says, again, I measured... Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the water, and the water came to my knees. So he continued through the water. Again, he's being led. But this is a, a picture of refreshing, of, of refreshment that is received from this water. But he had to be in the midst of the water in order to receive the benefits of the water. Again, he couldn't be standing on the bank and say, that sure looks refreshing. It's not going to change his body temperature. You put your feet in cold water, it helps a lot when it's hot. But it says he went another thousand and water came to his waist at the end of verse 4. So he's continually growing deeper and deeper in what God had called him. And he's in the midst of it. He's staying not by the shore because even as you have a, a river, it's going to vary in depth. You can stand right near the shoreline and stay by your ankles. But he was in the center. He was committed. As deep as he could be is where he was at. And he was receiving exactly what was being given to him. So at his waist. And again, he was measured. He measured 1,000. And it was a river. See, now we've gotten, basically you're talking about, if you add those up, just less than a mile in distance went from your ankles, which we know six inches of water could take a man down anyway. But now he's roughly a mile away, and now it's a river. A river that is, is unable to cross. It says, verse 5, And again he measured 1,000, it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. Praise God. Today is a perfect example for us to think how refreshing would cool water be. I don't know about you, but I know when, as a kid when I would swim, my favorite part was going underwater and pushing off one side and just kind of going. Yeah. So, 
just kind of cruise and just guide you in the water. And it feels so refreshing. It there's there is a a cool relaxing effect because you don't you don't hear anything. Yeah. It's just quiet and you're just gliding. And then you gotta get up out of there because you need some oxygen. Wow. <laughs> but it's refreshing. On a day like today, how refreshing would that be? I think we should all go to the beach where you can <laughs> Oh, the beach is a, the beach is a, a little hectic these days, <laughs> but the refreshing went from a small portion that he was involved, and he pressed in, and it went to his knee, and he pressed in, and it went to his ankle. I mean, there's there's uh, thoughts and commentaries that talk about each thing and having specific meanings that some believe it might mean and ones that believe it might not mean, and and. But overall, it's just talking about full refreshment mm -hmm. that he's been given in the Lord. And why is that? Because he's within the water. He's a part of receiving this living water. He's not on the outside. He's not on the shore. He's receiving it, and now he's engulfed in it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He's engulfed in these things. And we're talking about, oh, we want to walk in the Spirit. Well, that sounds like a real Christian Christianese, they kind of call it. You have really good Christian words you can say to people. What does that mean? It means to be obedient to the word of God. Because the Holy Spirit is what is guiding us to follow the word of God. On our own, we can't follow anything. Anything that we have, the speaking power comes from God by his Holy Spirit. So if we think, oh man, I'm keeping myself because I'm dedicated and I'm a really great Christian. Guess what? I've got news for you. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. It's the grace of God that is within you. We do have a free will. You can walk away from God. But there is a consequence. So this, this beautiful picture of receiving, even being in this living water, it has effect. This water has effect. And in verse 6, it says as he came back, he couldn't swim. It could not be crossed. In verse 6, it says, he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Take a look around, basically, he's telling him. Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I, when I returned there, along the bank of the river were many trees on one side and the other. Mm -hmm. Then he said to me, this water flows toward the east region down into the valley and enters the sea. And when it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. This is a healing water. A refreshing and a healing water because of where it comes from. Verse nine, and it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river goes will live. There will be a great multitude of fish because these waters go there. For they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. And again, when it's speaking of the Dead Sea. Some of us were blessed to be able to go to the Dead Sea. And it's, it's really amazing when you think about it. The density of the salt is so thick that you can't sink. People say it's impossible. How do you not sink in water unless your name is Jesus and you're walking on it? <laughs> or unless he calls you out, your name is Peter for a few, for a few steps anyway. <laughs> but this water is so thick that you just kind of bob there. <laughs> I, 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 could, I, could, I could confess that I saw with my own eyes and Daniel Jr. wouldn't sink. <laughs> he was just sitting there. <laughs> and he should have sank. I don't know if he's watching with Tom. <laughs> but it's amazing on how there's nothing that can survive in that water because of the density of the salt. But the word of God says that this living water will pour in. 
and won't just allow life to be there, but abundance will come. It even mentions that if we keep reading, verse 10, and it shall be that fishermen will stand by it from the Engedi to Ogalum, and they will be put, uh, they will be places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kinds as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. So it's going to be packed with fish. This living water is going to cause life. It's going to be ca cause life. And this is the physical portion. But the spiritual portion is in the same likeness. A, a, a wise man once said, water the desert and you make it a garden. It is life changing what Ezekiel went through. It's life changing what you and I went through. Living water is life changing. From a dry desert to being completely engulfed and refreshed with pure healing water. That's what the word of God says. Being engulfed in pure healing water. So how does that have any comparison to our life spiritually? Was our life barren like a desert before we came to know Christ? Was our life without meaning? Did our life just let us down when we came to hear the truth of the gospel did it cause us to thirst because this life just dries us up this life just it just it just makes us so dry as believers we can become dry as those who know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can become dry. How dry were you without him? <laughs> you were dust. <laughs> but only that living water that comes within us, that we receive, because it comes through the Holy Spirit. It comes through receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you receive this living water. This is a gift that is given, that is given to us. So we are restored because of what Jesus did on the cross. Yes. Amen. Thank you. We have been given, it says, water gushed from the side. Water and blood. Yes, Thank you. Gushed from the side. Yes. There is scripture after scripture that talk about, and we read. That Jesus said, if you thirst. What did Jesus tell the woman at the well? He said he could give her living water. So she'll never thirst again. And she said, good, because I'm tired of carrying these pails all over the place. He said, I'm not talking about that. He was giving her the truth, the living water. And then what did, the, what did those pails mean to her after that? She left them there and went to the city to tell everyone. Because now that meant nothing. The literal things of the world meant nothing because she had the truth, Amen. the spiritual truth. She was full of the spiritual water. Amen. This is what Jesus offers. And when he did this, what happened when the apostles came? The apostles saw him and they said, who's that? Where did he get food? Because when we left, he was weak. He was tired. He had been walking a long way. He needed to rest. But he said that that was his spiritual food, sharing the gospel. Yeah. You know that does the same for you and I? Yeah. You know when we feel down, we feel heavy laden, yeah. and we're starting to focus on our troubles and our problems? Man, you see this, and you're just saying, oh, we're dealing with this again, and that situation, and the 
and this person and that family member and all these different things are coming against us and we turn into what was it mean? Mm. Now the doctor's telling me this too. And then now this is going and all of a sudden everything is just mm. you know, I don't have time to worry about anyone else. Well guess what? That's where your focus is going. Amen. And you're gonna get dry. Mm. But as we look to others, as we look to yeah, being yeah. used by yeah. God, yeah. as we look to allowing this living water to flow from us to others, yeah. then we are we are encouraged, then we are blessed, then we are our, our thirst is quenched. Mm. Because it can only come from serving him. Yeah. See, this is a this is a spiritual truth that we have to understand. But sometimes it takes us an adjustment in our lives because we're accustomed to things a certain way. And we think God should work around our thrust because there's times where we let God know. And I told God, but he's still not doing it my way. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> I, I say from experience, <laughs> I said, Lord, all you, all you have to do is this, Lord. <laughs> Just heal this and take care of that and everything's going to be great, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Um, there is a, 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 a bump in the road here that we see in verse 11. In verse 11, it says, and that's the three letter word that we come across so many times in the Bible. Sometimes it can be great, sometimes it can be the opposite end. It says, but, but its swamps and marshes will not be healed. They will be given over to salt. <clears throat> what is the difference between a river and a swamp and a marsh? From the outside, just basically looking at it, a river is flowing. It is moving. There's life, there's activity. If there is a marsh, it is stagnant. If there's a swamp, it's probably clogged up. <laughs> Watch too much TV. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen enough of those programs. I think I could hunt one of those alligators with a hole in it. But, <laughs> but it's stagnant. It stinks. Have you ever been around stagnant water? It smells. Things grow in it. You don't want to drink it. It's of no benefit to you. West Nile comes. <laughs> Mosquitoes. But without any movement or life, things become stagnant. How can we look? How can we look on that spiritually? When we become stagnant, we spiritually we stink it up. <laughs> we need to be in a position to be used. That means we have to be ready. If we're in a position that's being stagnant, we're not ready to be. We have to be in a position where we're going forward, where things are, are moving, where we're constantly seeking God and being used by God and asking God how we can be used in the future. And how do we do that? Being together. Being in the word of God. Being on our knees. Staying in the river. We must stay in the living water. That Holy Spirit, that's walking in the Spirit. Receiving that and walking in it. We must continue in it. We can't stand on the shore and tell others, you need that. We have to be in and say, come on in. Come with me. I'll, be, I'll go right in front of you. Follow me down this river. Because that's how someone is going to follow. That's how we're going to make changes. And that's how the Holy Spirit is going to use us in the lives of our brothers and sisters, Amen. in the lives of our family members. Yes, yes. Because they're, they know us. They know us well. Those in your household know you. 
You've mentioned this before. If you've ever taught Sunday school, you've had an insight on a lot of families in the church. <laughs> you hear the little children, they start talking, and it's funny. We, we, ha we learned that early. When we bring Jacob and he go to Sunday school, and he'd tell them how he would have spoons that he would hide because he knew he was going to get it with a spoon, so he would stash all the spoons. My wife found one day underneath the pillow, and all these spoons were under there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to be, he's an old married man now, so I can say these things. <laughs> but well, you, you, get, you get much insight from young people. <laughs> but we want to be that, that shining light so that they can use the the example that we are to want more of Jesus, to want to get in that water, to want to be able to go fully in that water. Because when a water is flowing, when a river is flowing, even they they they, they say the lazy rivers, they have swimming pools that have that, you just gotta glide. You don't even have to do any work. The river does all the work. You're just there. You're just going along for the ride. And just floating down the road, just exactly where you're supposed to be. But who's in control? And where's the river coming from? See, and that's where the difference is. That's when you find out whether you're in the reclaimed water or whether you're in the living water. Because where is that river going to go? In Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah makes a statement. And this is, this is the Lord that's speaking in verse 13. You see, for my, and you see the M as a capital letter, you know that that's, that's God. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. See, there you go. Where is the living waters coming from? He said, they, are for, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewn for themselves cisterns, yeah. broken cisterns that can hold no water. Yeah. Trying to do things our own way won't hold the water anymore. Thinking that things should go the way we believe instead of what the Word of God says will not hold water. So many times it's easy to say that I'm a pretty good guy. <laughs> you look in the mirror, say, you're all right. There's worse than you. That might work if God graded on a curve. But he doesn't. He grades on perfection. And unless we have the blood of Christ as a cover, unless we have been washed clean, then we bear our own sin. But it says they were trying to do things their own way. They were trying to carry water in a manner that they thought was best. They did it their way. And it's empty. It might hold water for a little while, because if you fill up a pot and it has a small hole, you might be able to carry it. You're going to get your feet wet. You might not be able to carry it for a while. Eventually, you're going to look at that pot for a drink, and it's empty. It's empty. But the living waters are flowing. They're continuous. They're constant, because they're flowing from a source that will never end. We know that source, and that source is God. Amen. Isaiah chapter 59 tells us that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The enemy is going to come in like a reclaimed water flood. Like somebody just
this flush. <laughs> Again, apologize for the plumbing references. <laughs> I gotta keep Brother Victor happy. <laughs> but that's all the world has to offer. You know that reclaimed water looks very clear. <laughs> this is the only visitation. <laughs> you, you see the sprinklers going at schools and you say, wow, that looks refreshing <laughs> and nice and cool out there. Don't run in it. <laughs> Don't go out there and get wet. Make sure it's not spraying on the drinking fountain. You don't want someone to drink out of that drinking fountain afterwards because it's unclean. It's unclean. It's leprous. But it looks like it is. Just kind of like we mentioned the, the saltwater Christian. It appears to be one thing, but in, 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 in all reality, it's not. And reality truly is something that we have to base our walk in. And that's not very popular in the world right now. When we talk about reality, reality is seen through feelings in the day we live in. My feelings today determine my reality. I mean, to a point, I don't want to go into detail, to a point where you can say you feel like one gender and you want to feel like and you're another gender. When can your feelings change reality? And once that happens, you have you have you have uh, have stirred up the water to a point that you can't see through anymore. That there's no absolute, there's no truth, there's no understanding of truth because it all depends. Well, that's the way they feel. Okay, well that's fine. What if you feel different? Okay, that's fine. Everybody can feel whatever they want unless you want Jesus. Then, then you're just full of hate. Then you're then then everyone wants to attack you and come against you. But it's about feeling. But now I want to I want to pull back a little bit from that. I'm talking about feelings within ourselves because we can't control some of those things. So many people will get on soapboxes and get upset, and we're going to this, and we're going to pick at that, and we're going to protest against this, and we need to get together and go to the government and do this and that. I have, I have no problem with people standing for the word of God and even uh, signed on to petitions as the church to stand for, for marriage and, and being a man and a woman, some of those things. I, I have no problem with any of that. But when it takes away from what sharing the word of God, then you're missing the whole point because then the enemy is winning. He's pulling you into politics instead of doing sharing the word of God and the truth of the gospel. And what that's going to save lives. So, but so within ourselves, when we look at this, we can't look at our reality and say, well, um, I've been raised thinking that blank, blank, blank. Well, um, I've been through a lot, and because of these circumstances that I've gone through, I believe blank, blank, blank. Those do not compare with the Word of God. The Bible says, it is written in the word of God. See, that has to take preeminence over everything. That's the true reality. That's true. What we've gone through is, is something that is true to us, and, and, and I'm not belittling that or pushing that aside, but it can't change the true word of God. I, I, I've, been, I've been told by people before and warned, well, you better be careful because you don't you don't know what your kids do when they're not with you. Uh, if you say something about alcohol or drugs, you know you don't know what your kids are. So if my kids were doing that, that would make it okay. Then now I'm a poster boy of fighting for those things. No, it would mean my children are in the wrong. So we can't look at something through our own lens. It has to all be looked on through the truth of the gospel. That is. The reality that we have. That is what we must hold on to. That is what is guiding us. And what does the word of God say? And we're going to be closing here real soon. The word of God says, Jesus said he would satisfy our thirst. Jesus said he would satisfy our thirst. 
in Isaiah chapter 35. Verse 4. These, might sound, these verses might sound a little familiar to a few of us. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong. Do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With a with the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Amen. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Sorry, that was really good. Then the lame man shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Praise God. See that out there? Yeah, it's about 103 out there, but it's desert. And I don't mean because of the temperature. I mean because of the moral temperature. It's a desert out there. There is no life out there. Everything is temporary out there. That's why we must hold on to the truth. That's why we must stay in the living water. We need to refresh ourselves daily. That's how we can continue in this. If we keep getting on the edge, we keep going out, it's the the the, the easiest thing, it always made the most sense in my own brain to, to physically picture is going into the ocean. When you walk into the ocean and the waves start coming, you get hit. They might start at your ankles. It's not too bad. Get a little further. Now it's at your knees and you're starting to get rocked a little bit. It's a little bit chilly. Now you get to your waist and you're moving around and here comes another wave. If you just stand there, you're gonna get you're gonna get beat silly by those waves because guess what? They're not gonna stop. They say, oh, pretty soon they're gonna stop. Pretty soon our trials are gonna end. Pretty soon our problems are gonna go away. Then everything's gonna be all right. I need God right now because of this wave that's coming. But once this wave passed, I don't need God anymore. I'll be all right. I can do things on my own. I got it from here, God. Guess what? Another wave's coming. Another wave's coming. Another wave's coming. It doesn't stop. But when we press in, we get past that wave. Now all of a sudden we have to swim a little bit, but we're not getting beat up by the wave. Now we're beyond that. Now we're now we're fully, fully engulfed in the water. Because that living water is what we need. That's what's going to keep us strong. The, the last scripture I want to read is in Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm going to ask the worship team to come forward. And this was a scripture that we read on Saturday morning. Everybody's getting jealous for Saturday morning prayer. Oh, that was good. Oh, we had this and that. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. The word of God says, therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proven steadfast and every transgression and disobedience receives a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. And down in verse 8, it says, But now, we do not yet see all things put under him, but we see Jesus. Amen. We see Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That is where our eyes must be. Yes. Amen. 
We can neglect what was given to us because it's true. And we must keep our eyes and our, our focus on you. This morning, if there's an area that's weighed on you, if there's an area that's been dry and you just need a refresher, a refresher, and you just need to be even moved by his spirit, you can do that this morning. If there's an area that that you've always had as a problem, it's been something that you've been fighting with, surrender it, because there is only one truth. Stop trying to make things in your own system. Stop trying to make water in a pot with a hole. You can't carry it that way. It continues to run out. Surrender. Make a change today. And that living water will continue to flow and bring that refreshment. And that refreshment comes no matter your circumstance. You can say, well, I'm going through a sickness. Or you want to hear something that's brutally honest? There's a chosen day that we're all going to go through. And we choose now what we're going to go through. Today is the day of salvation. Why don't we stand? As we pray, I want you to think, am I applying this living water to my life? Because you may ask the question, well, what is of the most benefit to me? Uh, I'm, I'm going out in the sun, and, and I, I need to put on some suntan lotion. Am I going to use that? The, the 50, the SPF 50, the 30, the 50? What's going to work best for me? The one that you apply. Because it doesn't matter if you're carrying a 50 and you're showing it to the world. I've got this and it's going to protect me. I carry this Bible and I'm a believer and I love Jesus, but I'm not applying it to my life. Then it's empty. It does nothing for you. Now is the time to apply it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank yeah. you, Lord, for, yeah. for your word, Lord, for yes. your grace, for your mercy, for your refreshing yes. power, Lord. And we thank you that you have chosen to call us children of God. Father, if there's anyone here, Father, that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Father, you call them to this altar. Father, you place it in their heart to desire to receive you as Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Father, if there's anyone here that needs to renew that commitment to you, Father. You bring them forward to this altar. Minister to them. Refresh them and fill them with this living water. Father, if there's anyone here, Father, that is just overwhelmed by their circumstances. Father, you know all things. You know exactly what we need. You move in their heart. Have your way in this place by your Holy Spirit. Continue to go before us, even in this time of prayer. We thank you, Lord. We put all these things in your hands. The altar is open. I'm going to ask the leaders to come forward at this Thank time. You, Jesus. And you come. You desire prayer. God's placed someone in your heart as well. And you come. Lift them up. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. I'm calling on the dark
Your word never runs dry. It is a fresh and a new every day. And we thank you, Lord, that you never run dry. We do, but you never run dry. Thank you for touching us. Thank you for filling us. And continue blessing your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.